Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated.com. Or, of course, if you are watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me from the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, THI publisher Andrew Jones. And AJ just saw Carolina pick up the win over Virginia 74 to 58, ending a seven game losing streak to the UVA, which goes back to February 18th, 2017. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. In this three things video, but AJ, let's dive into the Tar Heels as we always do. And, and I think the first place and, and the only place you could really start is with Armando Baycott, a sensational performance um, from the junior big against the Wahoos. 29 points, 21 rebounds, his 11th double double in 15 games this season for the Tar Heels. So he's big time. He, he was big time again tonight. Um, had a just was a monster all over the court from start to finish, really. Probably the best performance we've seen from Armando Baycott in his Carolina career. He, he was just really good this afternoon against UVA. And, I mean, when you got when you got 29 and 21 coming from your big, your leader, you know, your best player on the year, that always helps, and it definitely helped Carolina. Tonight. One of the things that I've talked about for years that really good teams need to have is a screw you player, a player that basically says to the opponent, screw you, you can't stop me. Screw you, you can't rise to my level of of physicality you can't rise to my level of performance i'm gonna out oomph you in every way on the floor plus i'm highly skilled so armando was that guy tyler hansbro was that guy before at times there have been other dudes that were kind of screw you type players but this was very hansbro s basically what armando wanted armando got and the thing that i really liked about his performance is that it is it's just in the same mode now it's it, we, we I'm writing a column about Armando being in beast mode, but it's Armando mode. It's Baycott mode. It, it, he is playing at this level every time they take the floor. Now he may not produce as much. Some games he may not, the ball the shots may not fall as uh, often in some games, but he's become a fantastic college basketball player. And we saw tonight a guy pull a 20 and 20, against Virginia, which hasn't happened against the Wahoos since Tim Duncan did it, and I think 1997. And uh, that was a long time ago. That was my first full year in the business. And I covered a few UVA games that year, and I covered some Tim Duncan games that year, and that's big-time company. So for him to do something against UVA, against that pack line defense that Carolina has things have struggled mightily the last few years against UVA, this was an unbelievable performance. But – Hubert will tell you, and Armando will tell you, part of it was a byproduct of what the Tar Heels were on the floor. They were a club that played really well all over the floor. They used the club. They moved well. And we're going to get into that here in a second. But Armando, a lot of that stuff because of the way the other guys played, but credit him for doing a great job of getting position. When he puts that derriere down low and he seals his guy, there aren't many defend defenders in the country that can stop him. Armando would stop himself. Sometimes he doesn't finish, but tonight he grabbed his own misses and put him back in. Nine offensive rebounds, career high in points, career high in rebounds. And Steve Kirshner, the SID at Carolina, told us in the postgame press conference that while right now Armando has 21, assist, or 21 rebounds, they're going to look at it because they thought that mm -hmm. there were a couple – that during the game that were given to other Tar Heels. In fact, Brady Maddox said one of the one he got should have been given to Armando. So maybe the total climbs to 22 or 23 what does or not. This was an incredible performance by a guy who we've talked a lot about him the last few weeks, Jacob. He has grown up big time and his game is growing up right along with him growing up. He says the right things. Uh, I think there's a mission that's driving him within that mission is to get better and better. It's for this team to win. Uh, he said the other day, I'll go zero and zero if we win. But he knows that in order for them to win, he has to do a lot better than zero and zero. And he went 29 and 21 against a, a club that Carolina has really struggled with uh, for, for quite a while. I mean, there were the, in, in, during the seven game losing streak, Jacob, hmm. I think there were four games in which Carolina attempted more shots and he scored points. So Armando went 29 and, 19, uh, 29 and 21 against the, I keep saying 29 and 19 because I tweeted that out at one point. 29 and 21 against that. Mm. So uh, big time performance, very efficient around the basket. He's a guy that eats space. He's got enough finesse, good hands, he's got a soft touch. 
and he was at his best tonight. This was the kind of performance that in 15 years, if Kirsch is still doing this or somebody else, they're telling media when, when the Tar Heel has a big-time game in the Smith Center, well, 15 years ago, Armando Baycott did this. That's the kind of performance this was, and it was, it was a lot of fun to watch. It was a lot of fun to watch a guy like him with the path that he's taken to get to this point achieve that against that opponent. I think that, I think that that's very personally rewarding for him, and he'll, he'll think about that some tonight. Yeah, definitely. It was big time for the Tar Heels. Definitely, a, you know, all time performance from from the junior big. It, it, it was really good from him from, from start to finish. Like I said, going to read some stats off real quick. Uh, Brady Manick just behind Armando Baycott, 19 points, five assists, five rebounds. Good game from Brady Manick um, against uh, UVA today. Uh, Caleb Love, 16 points, five assists. Rest of the team, besides those three, combined for just 10 points. So Baycott, Manick, and Love really, really led the way for the Tar Heels. You, you mentioned ball movement. I want to talk about that because I think that's the second biggest thing we need to hit on. I thought the ball movement was great. I think Carolina played very unselfishly. 19 assists for the Tar Heels on the day. You saw Carolina getting good shots because of that, and they were knocking them down. I mean, shot 47.5% on the day. So uh, ball movement was good. When, when Carolina's moving the ball like that, when they're playing unselfish basketball like they were today, they're that much better. And I think it really culminated in the performance we saw from the Tar Heels. If you were to have lasers shine down from the roof of the Dean Dome on both courts, both, both around both baskets where Carolina shot the first half and then the second half, and it were to hit the o- spots where they took open shots today, you would have a tough time navigating through that area. You get zapped yeah. by the laser. My point is they were getting open looks everywhere. They were passing up open looks for even more open looks. The unselfishness with the extra pass, which we don't always see with this team, was absolutely there. It was there last week against Boston College. And Caleb Love, I actually asked him, I said, was this the most unselfish you guys have played all year? He quickly went to BC. But, and and, and it's true. The difference is this wasn't BC. This wasn't a team that hadn't practiced in two weeks. This was a, this was a club that plays – arguably as a program, the best defense in college basketball. This was a program that had tied Carolina into a – twisted them into a knot or a pretzel, whatever you want to call it, the last seven times that they've played. And even when Carolina beat them right before the streaker, they still only scored 65 points, and that was the national championship team in 2017. Justin Jackson went off that night, still only scored 65. This club hadn't scored more than 63 in the streak – and they blew by that with like six and a half, seven minutes to go in the game tonight. So I love the unselfishness. I love the extra pass Caleb Love gave to, or excuse me, RJ Davis gave to Manic on the baseline in the second half. Manic's flip back to Armando for a dunk was just kind of them having fun, but it was the right play to make, as Brady said after the game. I love the skip passes. I love the penetrate by Caleb and the kickouts instead of just taking it to the rim and forcing guys. We saw a lot of sophomore Caleb tonight, whereas the other night in South Bend, we saw him go freshman Caleb, one possession, sophomore Caleb back to freshman Caleb. He was all sophomore Caleb tonight. So when he's all sophomore Caleb, Armando's playing the way he was. Brady Manick is just moving. He moves without the ball really well. He gets himself open in a lot of spots. When he's playing that, it's a really good basketball team, and they've got dudes that can knock down shots. They can shoot. Mm-hmm. So if they get open, the, you know, the key for them is to get the open looks. And when they get the open looks, they got dudes that are going to knock them down. And it'll be different guys each night. But we've talked a lot about the 20-point mark. And all but one game this year, somebody scored 20 points. So you know going in, if you just play well, you navigate the defense, you move, you get open, you have great recognition, and you're unselfish, you're going to score. You're going to have a high efficiency rate. They shot just below 50% against a great defensive team. And I know that Virginia is still figuring things out some, but it's still a very good defensive team. The numbers bear that out. And uh, I think historically, consider the fact that this team hadn't done that well against them, that makes this a better game for them. There's a few more exclamation marks on the end of that performance. But I love seeing a basketball team play so connected. I love seeing guys scoring and going nuts, but not caring if it's them scoring. So they'll pass up all those open looks the way they did. It was, it was, this was the kind of game that you bottle and you save for future viewing, unlike perhaps Wednesday night in South Bend. Yeah, definitely. This is the one you can kind of learn a lot from in some positive ways. South Bend being kind of the opposite 
take them with you. Take a lot of confidence from this game too, because keep in mind, you know, RJ Davis, guy who's been big time for the Tar Heels this season, 0 for 10 from the floor, just two points for him. You're not going to get that a lot from RJ Davis. So if you can still yeah. win by 16 against a UVA team like this, yeah, I mean, you'll take that. They had, they had 19 assists, I think 28 field goals. They only yep. had nine turnovers. So think about what they usually do against this club. Caleb only had one turnover. They had the five assists. The Manic had five assists. Hmm. Go back and look at his assist numbers in Oklahoma. You didn't see fives in that column. Okay. And he's had <laughs> a couple of games this year. He's done three. He's done four. Tonight was a career high with five. And that's great recognition. Recognition is an undervalued part of the game. And when a team has really good recognition, they've got the skill stuff and enough athleticism and stuff to go with it. It could be a pretty thing to watch. So that's, and also, and Hubert said after the game, one of the, I asked him about why they had success, especially after getting strangled for the last uh, several years against this club. The way they play now with the got with the four out one in maybe plays itself to this defense a little bit better compared to what they did before. Armando said, you know, they were doubling the post constantly before, but when Brady's out there and able to hit that three and they've got to keep an eye on him, they got to keep stay because he can catch and shoot so quickly. You yep. got to have a defender near him. Justin McCoy hit a three today, playing the four. So that kind of, made it a little bit uh, easier for them to attack that defense and have success. So uh, A-plus performance by the Tar Heels on the offensive end, no doubt. Yeah, they're big time. Uh, AJ, last thing I want to hit on, into the streak. I mentioned it earlier, but, you know, Carolina coming in this game and lost seven straight to UVA going back to the 2017 season, February 18th to be exact. First win over the, the Cavaliers since then. Hubert Davis's first game against him, he gets a win. I mean, he's been, he can't, can't really ask for much more than that. He's got a 1-0 record against the Wahoos and Roy really struggled with them over the last years. And, and this isn't a vintage UVA team. I'm, I'm joking about that in terms of, you know, comparing the two, but this isn't really a vintage UVA team from what we've seen over the years. You know, in some ways it's probably one of, if not Tony Bennett's worst or most mediocre team since he took over. I'm sure he had some, some poor teams when early on as well, but y- y- you know, ending the streak is big, I think, because it just seemed like, and you talk to a lot of Carolina fans, I've talked to a lot of Carolina fans, you know, it almost just seemed like they and sometimes the team didn't believe they could beat Virginia with a way with the way in which the series has gone down over the last four or five years in particular. So ending the streak and the way in which they did it at home, you know, you'll take that all day long and move on to the next one. Yeah, the well, by the way, some of the Carolina teams and during the streak weren't exactly vintage either. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> so point. So it kind of evens point. out, it kind of evens out, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you were there in Charlottesville a couple of years ago. And you and I were, were watching warm-ups in the baseline, and we just kind of talked about how, yeah. boy, that was the – remember Armando hurt his ankle against Ohio yep. State. They were coming off that beat down and came out of the tunnel, and you're like, oh, sometimes you just know if guys are just it's totally dialed in. And that, that was a club that was really struggling with the confidence at that time, and that was in that sequence where they lost to Wofford, went out to Gonzaga and got blown out and stuff. Mm-hmm. And – um this this club didn't have that mindset. I think uh, it was interesting when Hubert was asked yesterday in his press conference about the streak. Uh, you know, some coaches might poo-poo it and say, "Ah, it's not a big deal. We don't think about it. We just got to get better." And Hubert actually said, "Yeah, I've reminded them. You know, yeah, when you play pickup <laughs> and and you and you lose, and you you don't want to lose because then you, you you don't know when you're going to get back on the court and play again." And he kind of talked about having a little bit of a mono mono type mentality about this. Like, guys, you got to – it's unacceptable. You got to end this crap. Get rid of the narrative by getting a W. And I think yeah. that they came out with – I was down there during warm-ups today, like I do for every game, and I thought it was a really focused team, more focused than what I saw Wednesday night in South Bend. And clearly that's a that's a, a, a point about this team. When they're really focused and dialed in, they've been pretty damn good. Yeah. They're not focusing out in. They're not talented enough to overcome that against a lot of teams, which we've learned f- through 15 games. So I, I think that they were intent on ending the streak. Now that it's over, they didn't really want to talk about it too much. It was more about the way they played, which is a great sign because ultimately the streak was going to end at some point, but they have to play well and they have to connect playing well. They have to understand yeah, yeah. when they watch film, when, when Hubert preaches the energy, effort, and toughness, okay, guys, this is what that looks like. The other night, that's not what that looks like. So it's up to you. So they have a lot of intel. Now they go into a week off to recognize, okay, what is our identity? Well, when we play with energy, effort, and toughness, and we're totally focused and dialed in, we have a pretty good-looking club. When we don't have that stuff, we're not capable of beating a lot of teams because we don't have that little 
X factor that maybe some Carolina teams in the past have had. They can still be very good, and they're learning that you just got to bring it every night. They had a little extra zing to bring in here because of the seven-game streak and because it was UVA. Uh, but I think the lesson is that it didn't really matter in the end. They were playing a team that had Virginia on the front of the jersey. They were t- playing a team that played a defensive style that's given Carolina problems. But none of that mattered tonight because this was a different mindset. This was a different approach. It was an approach from an offensive standpoint and from a mental standpoint. And and once they saw the ball fall through a lot kind of early, I think they that they they weren't going to tense up. I never saw them get tensed or stressed at all. Even when UVA had some good stretches, they handled it really, really well. They handled it like a mature basketball team. So bigger than any in the streak was I thought they grew tonight and they saw more evidence about what happens when you do the things that Hubert says, when you connect those words in the locker room to the court. And that to me is bigger than them ending the streak, but it's a good thing they ended it because I think psychologically they need to just to kick that thing to the curb and, and move forward. Yeah. Really nice response from the Tar Heels, you know, following what happened on Wednesday night in South Bend. So Carolina getting the win 74 to 58 over Virginia, improving to 11 in four on the season, three and one to ACC UVA dropping to nine and six, three and two in conference play. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. AJ, I'm going to let you get to work. We, also, we got another podcast we need to do because we've had some. We got to do football, football one here, well. don't we? Hey, man, we're we're all got over the place today. Football breaking news during the middle of the basketball. Yeah, game, shout huh? out UNC football for for breaking that. At, what was it like halftime? I don't even know if it was halftime. At least, at least Jeremy <laughs> waited to halftime to put that out, right? Yeah, shout out Jeremy. I was thinking of him when that news came out. I was like, it was. That's bold, right? Bold move, right there, guys. We're going <laughs> to end up with like fourteen things rolling on our front page today. Yeah, I was tweeting I basketball, it. football, and then checking the boards. It was all over the place. Two, two sport. We're two sport guys yeah, today. And, and who said the football basketball overlap was over? Yeah, nah, that ne- never ends, does it? I don't think it ever really ends. <laughs> but yeah, we got to hop on that, guys. So appreciate you guys watching. I've been Jacob Turner. Like I said, he's been Andrew Jones. Make sure you keep it locked to Tar Heel Illustrated. dot com as well. You can find a link to our website in the description below for all your post game coverage from tonight's game and from the news. Uh, UNC football news as well. Go check out TarHillIllustrated.com. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks. Thanks.